The University of Pennsylvania has named a new interim leader for its board after the school's president and board chair resigned on Saturday, followed widespread outrage over President Liz McGill's testimony at a hearing about anti-Semitism last week. Does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Penn's rules or code of conduct? Yes or no? If the speech turns into conduct, it can be harassment. Yes, it is a context-dependent decision, Congresswoman. With her resignation, there's more attention than ever on college campuses on the right to free speech and the right to be safe. As political editor John Delano reports, local universities are working hard to find the right balance. As Governor Shapiro reiterated in his one-on-one -on -one interview with me, Pennsylvania, going back to William Penn and Ben Franklin, has long been the home of vigorous, controversial, and often offensive free speech. We need to make sure Pennsylvania is a place where you can have that freedom of speech, where you can have that ability to march down the street here in Pittsburgh, Philly, places in between, and, and make sure your voice is heard whether I agree or disagree. That speech includes sharp and robust criticism of Israel and its government, Hamas and its supporters, and anybody else, especially on university campuses, says attorney Zachary Greenberg with FIRE the Philadelphia-based Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression. And universities have dual obligations, both to uphold the free speech rights of their student, to uh, talk about political issues like Israel-Palestine, and to learn in an environment that's free from true threats or other forms of unprotected misconduct. While critical of Penn's now-resigned president, Shapiro singled out leaders at Penn State, Carnegie Mellon, and Pitt for developing policies that allow free speech while protecting students from physical harm or illegal ethnic intimidation. The work that Neely Bendapudi is doing at Penn State, that Farnan Jahanian is doing at Carnegie Mellon, just to name two, and there, there are many others, Joan Gable at Pitt, um, that work is helping make sure students can be heard, the community can be heard, but then in hearing them, folks can feel safe at the same time. The Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression grades universities on their support for free speech, allowing diverse and controversial speakers, and making all feel safe to espouse views from left wing to right wing. CMU is ranked 23rd and above average, while Pitt is ranked 130th and average, and Penn State below average at 189th among 250 schools ranked. Both Pitt and Penn State have new leaders who could make a difference in the months ahead. We work with these universities. We urge them to make their universities a better place for free speech by revising their speech codes, having strong pronouncements, protecting the right of students to discuss these issues, and allowing a free discussion of these views on their campuses. While speech that offends others is protected, unprotected speech includes threats to kill or harm somebody, especially because of their race, religion, or ethnic background. Where does it cross a line? When you're threatening others, when you're making people feel unsafe, when you're brandishing weapons, when you're doing things that purposely damage property or purposely put people at risk. That's unacceptable. John Delano, KDKA TV News.